Here via Skype to discuss this week's media screws is Katie Halper herself. She is the host of the Katie Halper Show and co-host of Useful Idiots, our Rolling Stone podcast. And I was actually on Katie's show. I got to hang out with her last weekend. When is that yeah. coming out, Katie? I think yeah. it'll be out by the time this airs. Yes, it's coming out Friday. And how go. can people find it? Uh, on SoundCloud and iTunes, they can subscribe to the Katie Halper Show. Uh, yeah. Which, if they yeah, haven't done really, that, I don't know what they're waiting for. Highly recommend it. I Indeed. Know, seriously. And it's a really great interview, and it was really cute because Crystal's um, kids were there. <laughs> Did I say that? Not yeah. in the room. Yeah. Which right. is so always, yeah. always great for me. Yeah. It really is great for they're me when so I'm trying cute. to work and my kids are all around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So all right. Um, so let's start with this uh, this find you had of as if it wasn't good enough for the New York Times to render the most absurd and hilariously bad endorsement, dual endorsement ever. They also decided to have a very unusual headline change, if we can throw up Katie's tweet here of exactly what happened. So, um, so just explain this. What was the original headline? What was it watered down to? And why do you think so? Okay, so the original headline was, and this was a find uh, from Ryan Graham that I tweeted about, but the original headline was, Stop Comparing Bernie to Trump, It's Ridiculous. And then it turned into, Please Stop Calling Bernie Sanders a Populist. <laughs> so it's, it's interesting because it's, it's maybe it doesn't seem like a huge deal, but it's significant because it reminds us of one um, when... A couple years ago, there was an article about Sanders in the New York Times that had the headline, Sanders achieved victories through legislative side doors. And that was changed to, through legislative side doors, Sanders achieved modest victories. So mm -hmm. the order is, was changed and modest was injected. And that in that case, the article actually was changed so that it added critical language about Sanders that hadn't wasn't in there. And it also um, erased uh, positive things that had been said about Sanders. And it even took some quotes out of context. But it's like they, they the, it, it's really weird and suspicious and sketchy that people are, that the New York Times has to change the headlines because it, it is too flattering to Sanders. It's also just really strange, Katie, because to say that he's not a populist is ludicrous. I mean, it's absolutely insane. <laughs> right. I mean, to say, to oh, say right. stop That's comparing to Trump, I mean, okay, sure, like, whatever. I mean, uh, Trump, I, I actually think the comparison is quite apt and, frankly, complimentary to Sanders. But, I mean, if you look at it, from, in, in saying yeah. he's not a populist, that's great. That's stupid. Like, it's factually incorrect. And, yeah, I don't really understand the calculus behind it, but I am yeah. glad that you that you and Ryan highlighted it. Yeah, and, and, the, and I do think the important point is that they can't seem – probably, but you know what it is, is that their own stupid co-endorsement – of uh, Klobuchar, Amy, uh, uh, Amy Stapler throwing, duck killing Klobuchar, <laughs> and Elizabeth, uh, I'm not going to go there about whether or not Sanders is liked by people. Warren, there that they often, including in that endorsement, do traffic in this really stupid false equivalency between Trump and and Sanders, and they actually do that in that endorsement where they're like, we can't tr swap out yeah, one extremism right. for the other. And as you said, there's something to it, Sagar, but what it is yeah. is that he appeals, he's competitive against Trump, right? Mm -hmm. He can appeal away uh, voters. It makes him very electable against Trump. But the idea that, you know, blaming Mexicans and Muslims, which is what Trump does, mm -hmm. and blaming, you know, inequality and corporate greed are comparable is just absurd. Sure. So, yeah, I think that they needed to change that headline because it undermined their really stupid reporting and opinion pieces and endorsements. And I'm sure we'll see, be seeing more of that. So they can't undermine it in the oh, headline. There's, there's gonna indeed, be indeed. Yeah. Um, at the same time, a, a great friend of this show and of your work as well, Glenn Greenwald, a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist who has exposed corruption at the highest levels in the Bolsonaro government down in Brazil is now um, really that government is coming after him hard. He's already faced all kinds of threats of violence. He was attacked live on air. And now they've actually yeah. um, they're actually trying to prosecute him for essentially 
essentially the crime of doing journalism. Right. Now, in the U.S., of course, there are a lot of people here who, on a daily basis, express deep concern about challenges facing journalists, about attacks on the press, et cetera. But Glenn's views on impeachment and Russia and other issues have been inconvenient for that group. So there has been a noticeable lack of solidarity right. and support for Glenn Greenwald, an American Pulitzer Prize winning journalist who is now under attack by the Brazilian government. Right. Who exposed the um, corruption and, and frequently speaks out against the really dangerous rhetoric of mm -hmm. Bolsonaro, who is really very fascistic. You know, I think a lot of the language that people use to describe Trump is actually much more applicable to Bolsonaro. He was in the military dictatorship. He was in the military at that point. He's praised torturers. He said really offensive, not just offensive things, but he actually has the power to do these things. Right. But so, so it's funny that, you know, all these people who talk about resistance and resisting fascism aren't really speaking out for Greenwald. Now, to be fair, the New York Times did actually write something. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah, think I mean, they wrote Trump. it. But, but Katie, I mean, you saw this phenomenon, at least I did, of all these people being like, you don't have to agree with Glenn Greenwald. Or be like, I don't agree with Glenn Greenwald. Right. And I think, it's like, who cares what you think? This is right. an American Why journalist being prosecuted. Disclaimer. Yeah, you don't right. need the disclaimer. Just say, right. it's terrible what happened to Glenn Greenwald. That's all you have to say. Right. It's, it's, it's yeah. so simple. Nobody cares about your opinion about Glenn Greenwald. What we do care about is that an American citizen is being unjustly prosecuted by a foreign government for the crime of journalism. I think we should just, you know, focus on that. Right. And it yeah. speaks to actually the power of this kind of soft censorship and smearing and guilt by association that we see a lot, where people are afraid to be tainted. So they have to say, I mean, I mean, believe me, I don't agree with what he has to say. And again, you know, this is just a basic tenet of liberalism. And I, I don't identify, I mean, I'm leftist and yeah. I overlap with libs, but there's a lot I disagree with on them, um, disagree with them about. But this is, again, the basic ten tenet of liberalism, that you believe in people's right to say things and not be uh, prosecuted and persecuted. Um, and we saw this with Max Blumenthal also. I mean, there was the own virtual silence. And at least now there's a press organization like is uh, speaking out against it. But when Max Blumenthal was ar arrested for covering the um, Venezuelan uh, opposition's attempt to kick out the uh, embassy protectors, uh, people, this pre these press organizations were like, well, because he wasn't reporting at the time of his arrest, uh, it doesn't count. But right. th it's a similar thing. And, and Glenn, because he's a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, it's that much harder to dismiss him and kind of um, marginalize him. But as, as, we're, as we've seen, it is this constant fear of being um, associated with someone who's toxic. And this is right. really, really dangerous. Well, it is kind think, of a full of soft censorship. Sorry. And we should right, say this exactly isn't right. just like random people yeah. on Twitter or even blue checks on Twitter. These are presidential candidates who have been, I mean, they've almost all been completely silent. Elizabeth Warren finally came out, you know, a day late right. and a dollar short. Of course, Sanders and Tulsi were right there in solidarity yeah. with them. Everyone else has been silent. And in part, it's because it's inconvenient for the liberal narrative that Glenn is like a Russian operative or he's somehow right. soft on fascism Ludicrous. when he's literally being potentially thrown in prison in Brazil right. yeah. for how hard he is fighting fascism there. So yeah. I think that is part of this as well. But I wanted to get your take, too, on, <laughs> look, we've had wall-to-wall -wall impeachment coverage right. this whole week. And, you yeah. know, they continue to push this narrative that minds are going to change, that the outcome is uncertain, that we need to get these witnesses or hear this testimony because finally the American people will realize how central this is to their lives. Republicans will come on board, et cetera, et cetera. What has been your observation with all of this this week? Well, I love the veneration of Adam Schiff. Oh, um, God, it's really, yeah. it's like one, um, Michael Tomaski had a, a headline at the Daily Beast. Adam Schiff stands up and speaks the truth at Mitch McConnell's upside down Stalinist show trial. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't even know what he's saying. What what about it is a show trial? I mean, yeah. show trials, Stalinist show don't trials. Don't show trials like, result in convictions? Isn't that usually how it goes? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, way to undermine, way to, uh, <laughs> to uh, rub in your own failures. But yeah. um, I don't even know what that means because a show trial is when you like you know force people to confess to things. Like it's, again, the whole thing is bizarre. Thing, though. It's related, actually, I didn't think of this, but it's related to the thing that we're seeing with Glenn, which is this smear, this guilt by association, this throwing around labels like Stalinist, Stalinism. And it's ironic because, of course, a lot of us have been calling this neo-McCarthyism. And it is neo-McCarthyism. Now, that's 
Russia is not communist, so that's not what the issue is. But it is interesting that it functions in a similar way, built by association and throwbacks to Russia and being communist. Right. So it's and, and you know, another thing, Katie, I, so I've really observed is all of these like blue checks who are in the establishment who are like, my children will be taught Adam Schiff's words tonight. Right. It's like, no, they won't. You know what they will yeah. be taught about? About the massive populist uprising from the year 2016 to whenever the hell we figure out what, what is going on. About right. class, literal class uprisings against the very people who think that this is insane speech trying to invalidate the election and saying that we have to fight Russia over there so we don't have to fight Russia right. over here it's is so going to be taught war. to their kids. It's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. really Cold War. It's such a Cold War throwback in the language. Um, yeah, and it's really embarrassing. And yeah, it's funny because it's like people keep throwing out, out the line, have you no decency, you know, which is what like that senator yeah, finally said right. to, to McCarthy. But I'm like, don't you yeah. get that you guys are the McCarthy in this situation? <laughs> like, yeah, maybe, yeah, or, yeah. So actually, you guys are figured out. Yeah, All right, Katie. I don't think they're going to figure that out. Katie, yeah. thank you so much. Thank great you. to see you. Have a great Thanks. weekend. Great, you too. Bye. We'll have more for you just after this.